and FIFA, dear President, we have been able to multiply by a factor of seven the investments that uh, we are doing in the different parts of the world, and the committee of uh, Mr. Kalanga is overseeing all this investment because it is important that money that goes to football goes really into football. We have been spending in the last years over half a billion US dollars only in Africa. We have been increasing the number of African teams, doubling effectively the presence of African teams in the men's and in the women's World Cup. We will do this, the same as of next year for the youth World Cup, again doubling the number of African representatives. Uh, why? Because one of the values in which I believe is the unity. And I really believe, we really believe that football unites the world. We need to bring the entire world to be part of uh, football. And for too long, uh, uh, some parts of the world have been not completely excluded, but put a little bit on one side when it comes to football, football development, participation, opportunity. We have changed that, and we want to keep changing that. Having five countries from Africa participating in the Men's World Cup or having nine or ten makes a life of difference for uh, states, countries, uh, kids, uh, players, everyone that, that loves the game because suddenly everyone has a real, real opportunity to uh, uh, participate. In your country, in, uh, in Zambia, uh, dear President, uh, you have a very rich football tradition, uh, history of football. Uh, I was saying earlier and, and, and yesterday, you're too young, you don't remember. In 1988, it was the last century, 1988, Zambia played in the Olympic Games and uh, they played a match against Italy. I'm Italian. And at that time, Italy was world champion in 1982 and uh, organizing the world championship in 1990. So we didn't even know where Zambia is, right? He said, okay, Zambia, we will beat them easily. Well, Zambia beat Italy 4-0, right? I didn't sleep for a week, <laughs> but I knew what Zambia was, a football country already back then. Of course, many things happened, uh, the tragedy of the heroes of 93, uh, but football continued to grow in, in, in Zambia in an incredible way, thanks to the work done by the governments, by the football officials, by the people, finally, because we are the people's sport of, uh, of this country. And in the last few years, women's football has become incredibly uh, powerful in, uh, in, in Zambia, qualifying for the World Cup in uh, 2023 in uh, Australia and New Zealand. It's not easy, it's not easy. Qualifying for the Olympic Games in a few weeks' time in uh, Paris, it's even more difficult. And you did it, you made it. The, the Copper Queens are today, uh, I can say that, the best ambassadors of, uh, of those countries, because, of this country, because their smiles, their talent, uh, their qualities uh, are seen and cherished all over the world, from Europe to United States to China. Everyone knows them. The two most expensive players uh, are from, from Zambia, right? Barbara and, 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 and Rachel. And, <clears throat> and many more, of course, will, uh, will come. And this puts Zambia at, right at the heart of the global landscape. The global landscape of football, of course, but as we know that football is the most important thing in the world, Zambia is in the middle, in the heart of the most important part of uh, uh, the world. And from our side at uh, FIFA that we can be able to uh, contribute a little bit to uh, your success stories, to giving hope and opportunities to uh, girls and boys in your country, uh, to uh, give a smile to children. That's what I, what I always say, you know, in football we have one world champion, right? One for the men and one for the women. But we have 211 countries part of FIFA, more than the United Nations. 
Now, the World Cup that we all win every day, dear President, is, is the smile of every child to whom you give a ball and instantly the face changes. Instantly there is a smile, there is joy, there is happiness. So it is our joint responsibility of all of us to continue investing in the game. Thanks for everything you are doing for the national team uh, at senior level, for the women, for the men. You can always do more. Obviously, we can always do more. We have all to do more because we invest in our use, and our use is our future. And um, I think that uh, with this in mind, uh, uh, your future is definitely bright. Uh, we will invest now in, a, in an academy, in a training center to bring really the best talents, the best coaches with the best talents, make them shine more, but scout the whole country in all the 10 provinces to make sure that uh, everyone, everyone, everyone has a chance and an opportunity. They deserve it. And uh, I would like to thank you and your team from the bottom of my heart for your commitment and uh, your collaboration. This, we are part of the same team. We are all Zambians. And uh, we will win together, thank Mr. President. Thank you very much for having us here. Grazie mille, Mr. President. At this point in time, on behalf of the Honorable Minister of Youth, Sports and Arts, the Secretary of the Cabinet and colleagues present, it is my honor and privilege to call upon the President of the Republic of Zambia for his remarks. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Moderator. Let me start by welcoming the FIFA President, um, Vice President and the team, um, and also to State House, to Lusaka and, and Zambia and also acknowledge the Minister of Sports, Secretary of the Cabinet, and uh, senior colleagues uh, on the government or, or other stakeholders in the country um, around sports, around football. Um, let me proceed by expressing our gratitude to FIFA uh, at the global level for all the tremendous work that has been done over the years um, to develop football, sport, football in particular, because uh, usually when young people start off, they don't start as footballers. Some start as runners, some start as swimmers, uh, and along the way they find their way. But uh, we're very grateful as uh, Zambia to FIFA's role and the national, regional bodies and national bodies um, for their efforts um, under your leadership, Mr. President, the leaderships before you, because we all carry on where others left things, um, and our own funds here under President Kamanga's leadership and the leaderships before him and also at the national level as a country, national leadership. Collectively, that work which has been done for many years. And uh, I was reasonably grown up in 1988, reasonably, yeah. just about, so <laughs> to, to, to remember those games, but um, also the sort of talent that our own country, uh, Zambia and the continent, has been able to avail to the global football community over the years. It's all because of the investments, uh, the leadership or leaderships at different levels. So we want to recognize that. And certainly, as you will see what we'll say later, to encourage this investment, and I'll touch on it, um, to continue, because it's needed now more than ever before, uh, given the challenges including um, employment, job opportunities, business opportunities for the younger population, which is the, the greater part for us on the continent. Most of our people are young, so this is one area where they can exercise their talents towards varied you know, end points. 
let me also indicate that football is extremely important. Yes, as a sport, but also for health reasons, also for business, because I come from business, for business. Uh, I tell many Zambians that f sports football is not just for these mundane things we know the sports for, to deliver value in, but also as business opportunities. I already touched on the employment opportunities in a way, but this is a very, very, very important um, aspect. The issues that we now know what talent in football can deliver to families, to individuals, to families, to countries. If you look at what some of our celebrated footballers have been able to do for public good, putting health centers, schools, social amenities from their incomes arising from football. It's a great, great, great thing. And we would like to see more of that and like probably to see FIFA, FAS, FIFA, um, um, you know, African bodies to find a, some sort of, I know they're doing it, but maybe to enhance the business training skills part for our footballers early on. Not when they made the money, but early on. And maybe a support mechanism for them to be assisted in how to utilize best their earnings. So that, as like any business, when you are in active business, when you are earning, you are looking at the time when you will not be able to earn. By age, fruition of age, or other reasons, injury, for example, that footballers can prepare for their money to work for them when they are not any. I think this is an important matter to us. So I know you are doing something already, President, but you, maybe we could do more. In collaboration with governments, I'll give you an example, our own government is pushing the change of curricula so that we can introduce business skills early on in the children's educational development. I think this skill set is relevant in football, very, very relevant. We don't want to see talented people ending up in a deleric situation. I think it's, it defeats and also takes away the attraction for a lot of young people. So, football, as you said, President, is a love affair. Football is a love affair. Football is a great unifier. And football gets some of us, most people don't know, probably including the first president here, that in those early days before we had the technology to allow the television to repeat, to reverse or record what you're doing, we used to wake up to watch football, uh, FIFA, African, <laughs> Africa Cup, awkward hours. Because if we missed, then we would have to listen to someone telling us a story. Uh, it tells you that football is not only a game for the players or for the administrators, the referees, people like you. It's for everybody. Yeah. If you want to convince a difficult partner and you really love them, try and drag them through football. You may succeed. You may succeed. <laughs> you, may, you may succeed. <laughs> so, um, love, unity, very important. Um, Mr. President, because football is a game of teamwork, you can't play football with two people on the opposite side. Maybe you can say so, say so, when your penalties, striker and goalkeeper, but that's only momentarily. As a team game, direct players, others have mentioned already, it is important that we realize that differences will arise all the time inside a particular team, 
in a league with governments, with other stakeholders. It is inevitable, Mr. President. What am I saying? The message is that we in this country believe that football must take the lead in dialogue when there are challenges that arise. Because challenges will arise. There's no question about it. So we promote in this country, in football, in other sports, but generally in the economy, dialogue to resolve issues, even simple issues, where will be the training or technical training center be located? The one you are donating for, and we thank you for the donation. Where will it be located? I bet there were debates. There were disagreements. But we resolve those disagreements in the interest of fostering teamwork, in the interest of, uh, uh, if you like, conflict resolution. I want to encourage you to continue what you're doing, resolving issues of football at a global level through dialogue around the table like this, rather than litigation. And uh, my colleagues in cabinet know that I'm anti-litigation. And um, am I just saying it because you're here? No. We practice that. When we took over public office, we found a lot of litigation around key assets. And uh, some of those were in courts for 10, 11 years. And it means the assets remain idle from the business side. To unlock that asset, you needed, we had to take cases out of court, bring them to dialogue table, and today some mines are now producing. We don't do business, we say in court we do it at the mine site. So I want to encourage the football fraternity, Mr. President, um, at that level, continental level, country level, to dialogue whenever they face issues. How do they select a panel? How do they select a panel to choose the best footballer? There will be issues there. I don't want to repeat. I think that is the way we should um, look at things. So just my encouragement there, and we encourage our colleagues, local leaderships here, President knows that when they allow us to make a view, to make a comment, we'll make a comment veered towards dialogue so that the team spirit continues. The love affair that we all have with football continues. And uh, I think you can't have this contradiction of love and hatred on the flip side, uh, love and conflict on the flip side. I think we must push more the love side of the coin rather than the conflict side. And when we take things in that way, we'll be okay. We will be okay. And also to encourage us to engage, continuously engage governments as well, as we have done today, so that we can understand the issues we are faced with. Sometimes we don't know. Of course, our local colleagues guide us, but always to encourage that we exchange notes through the association, through the ministry, through the administration. And when it requires someone like me to be involved, we will be involved positively, not negatively, for the good of the sport. I thought I should say that. I'm sure you know why I'm saying that. Thank you. And don't come down with the hammers quickly whenever there's an issue. Yeah. <laughs> 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 because that's a scare. Hey, Faz will hammer, I mean, FIFA will hammer you here. So just encourage parties to, to, to get on with the, with the time. <laughs> Mr. President, let me, let me indicate something that really is a way of uh, appreciation but encouragement, the technical development in the game over the years. I know here it used to lead again to the subject of conflict. When a goal is scored in the days that there were no nets around the goal, just imagine those days, no net. I mean, the game is loved that even we villagers played football and put a wooden pole here, which is even itself, you know, like this. It's not, it's not straight. And another one here. And then the cross member is even worse. 
so you can imagine the conflicts when, when the ball gets in from a corner where they are bent and there's no net behind to show the effect. Terrible, isn't it? And then, <laughs> what am I talking about? Technological development, Mr. President, please continue with that. High tech, without destroying the, the talent part of football, the dribbling part and all of that stuff. Technology, let me cite one example. The goal line technology has really been uh, a marvel to some of us, and I think to many, that um, when you have an issue and now you go it, what do you call it? You have video CC, yeah, it's correct. It's a fantastic development. I think it again helps to resolve conflicts uh, and misunderstandings and heavy hearts. You want. Uh, after the game of football, people to go away smiling, singing, even when they've lost, right? Because they think they've lost fairly. So I want to encourage, we want to encourage FIFA, FAS, our own FAS here, um, Africa, you know, leaders, managers of football, to continually work on those issues that make football fair and equity brought into, into account. So I thought I should just uh, have sort of a conversation rather than giving a speech. So this is the way I chose I will have a conversation with yourself and we're very, very happy that you are here also to support the Technical Development Center somewhere in Chongwe, Minister. Yes. Um, and um, I hope we availed that land as government or they bought it. Did you buy it, President Commander? No, we, we availed it as government. Thank you. So, uh, Therein lies the partnership for common goal. I said therein lies the partnership. The government does its part, uh, local association does its part, eventually the global family comes on board. So thank you for that. And the development of uh, stadia around is, is, is also commendable and would like us to continue. Hopefully we can have a stadium in every provincial capital. I think this government is available to work with the local association to work with yourself so that we then can achieve what you, you mentioned. Amongst the things we mentioned, you mentioned about tapping talent from all over the country. That will be easier to have a convergence point in the province, at least at the provincial level. Yes, we'll like the districts, uh, then you'd be able to see or to identify talent. I know one of our national teams, KK11, had uh, fellows from all sorts of remote places remote places, exactly. But also to confirm with you, President, that we will be pushing the agenda as government with the local association and with your blessings now that we are reviving the mining sector. Um, something your President, uh, our local President will tell you, the mining sector was dead, dying basically. So in the last two years, nine months, we have pushed the revival of the mining sector which are the ones at a time that pushed a lot of talent development issues, facilities, opportunities, because mining is a big, mining generally is big business. So it allows some little revenues to be used for uh, sports development, infrastructure, but also other support. So we're reviving the mining sector, so you'll be pleased to know, and we are encouraging them to support sports and football being at the center of that. So I think we would like to work together with yourselves in, in, in that space. Um, let me say, um, finally, you are truly welcome here. Yes, you are welcome in Aspu Zambia, and we, 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 we agree. But also we want to ask you to be part of the marketing machine for this country. In opposition, I told myself that I'll be the chief marketing officer for Zambia. I'll be the chief investment officer. Call me anything, sweeper, cleaner, uh, runner. So we're marketing this country heavily. You know, restoring many things, rule of law, which is important for football anyway. Otherwise, if you thuggery around the, the sport stadium, you have a problem. Uh, law and order should apply in sports as well. It should apply everywhere. Um, we are attracting investment in sport, thank you for this, but in business generally. I'm a believer that um, 
even though we love things we want to do, if we have no capacity to do those things, it will just be dreams. So we are looking for investments in this country. Local investors, regional, Africa, global investors. A person in your position, you have a great network of friends. You didn't come to be FIFA president from nowhere. You came from somewhere and you built this network over the years. So we want to ask you, I want to ask you to help us market Zambia, sports, football, football, sports, in that order, football, sports, since it's football, football, sports, but also other investments, so that alongside this center, we can have many other things going on. With a stronger economy, bigger economy, we can invest more in football. Gracias. 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 Indeed. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, and Mr. President, before we blow the whistle on this meeting, I think what we would do um, is provide guidance on the next phase, but of course before the media leaves the meeting, we allow for five minutes to allow for the President to have any matters uh, that you wish to bring to your attention uh, beyond the eyes of the media. Um, through you, sir, I wish to state that today the Football Association of Zambia and the Government of the Republic of Zambia through the Ministry of Youth, Sports and Arts will be signing a Memorandum of Understanding. What this will do is establish the technical center, which will include football pitches, accommodation facilities, a center of excellence, a new FAS headquarters, uh, and all this will be in Chongwe district. And your government has provided 80 hectares of land for this endeavor. Mr. President, this is certainly a key inflection point in the future of football in this country. And I think this is a, a time people remember that, that, this, that we returned to our former glory where we can beat Italy 4-0. Uh, with that being said, Mr. President, I'd like to uh, seek the media's permission to excuse the meeting for a few minutes, then we'll join you in the lounge. The protocol officers will guide you of where the signing will take place, the, the memorandum.